it's uh, got these cones up here. It boils oil down here. The oil shoots up into this thing and knocks air molecules down because at very low vacuum, we're in a regime where like the idea of flow in air doesn't exist anymore because there's not enough particles. So they get knocked down. The oil instantly condenses when it hits the side of this, um, this container mm -hmm. and flows downwards. And it just pushes the air molecules out this vent over here. Yeah. So the only really limit to the diffusion pump is you have to turn it on at really low pressure because otherwise that's, it's not really going to do anything. And it will do a little bit, but it won't move very much gas mm -hmm. in terms of volume. And you can't let the pressure build up too high over here. If the pressure builds up too high over here, it and shoots the oil pressure. up mm -hmm. and it will get inside our container and mm -hmm. sublimate inside. So okay. this cold trap that we're gonna put liquid nitrogen in, that's actually to keep that from happening. Like even if the pressure builds up here, the oil will try to go up, but it will just condense on the cold trap and mm -hmm. come back down to the sides. Mm. Um, and the sides are cooled by water. Okay, so when you work this thing, you kind of just, it's going to be kind of intuitive um, for the most part. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the filament so we can do the deposition in the end. So, let's take some smack the slide around a little bit. How come there's a blank slide on there? Oh, because someone was planning on do it, using it and didn't mm -hmm. end up? Okay, so this guy inside here is a 60 watt um, filament. So that just means on here you don't turn it above 60 watts. So like, you, you know, the current times the voltage has to be equal to 60, less than 60 watts. Otherwise, it will just burn and we'll have to replace it. Okay. But I think these are like $20, $50, so it's not super crazy if that's how uh, they replace it. Okay. So you should be doing gloves when you do this part, but I'm just not going to touch anything I'm not supposed to. And the reason why is just because your oil, the oil on your hand will sublimate when it's inside there. And you need like barely any aluminum at all. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably enough. So I'm just going to with my two little thingies. <clears throat> so this goes on top of here. Make sure these aren't touching the electrodes, otherwise the electricity will just mm. conduct through this. That's a common mistake. And then you just put these guys on top. I'm trying not to touch them, but I just cleaned my hands, so it's probably okay. So you want to avoid, like, there's no oil inside the container? Yeah, honestly though, like, the amount of oil that gets in here from your hands is so small. Like, it's okay if you do it once or twice, but it's just like students every day doing it with greasy old hands. Yeah. But you never know what they're eating before they come to class. Maybe they just have a ton of bacon. You just get bacon grease all over. Are you going to Yeah, we probably don't need more. It's probably good. But we'll be able to tell really easily. So if you look at like the bubbles under here, see where it's black? Mm -hmm. That's where there's a good seal. Where it's white, there's not a good seal. What happens is you only really need um, a good seal around the outside, mm -hmm. like right on the outside, and then it will just suck the, the grease in, mm. sorry, the container, and like automatically seal, seal itself. So you don't need a ton of grease. It's already like enough just stuck all over it. What, are, what is, the, is the vacuum grease labeled vacuum grease? Sorry, here high, high vac grease? High vacuum grease, yeah. Silicon. silicon doesn't sublimate very much, so it's good for vacuum purposes. Okay, so the first step in this is just to get most of the system, as much of the system possible, to low pressure. So what are we going to do? We're just going to close the pump to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. open up everything else, and just turn on the mechanical pump. Nothing's really is going to happen. We're just going to get this down to low pressure. So like turn off valve four, which is this one. Yep. So on the mechanical pump. In general, in line means open for all valves except for this one. It's labeled on here though. Okay. So now that one's closed. This one is um, in line. Closed. Means open. Yeah. So we want it in line. <clears throat> 
Um, and then the valve two down here is open. Um, so this is probably good. Hopefully I haven't forgot anything. We'll realize it later. We fucked up and we'll just do a half start. But we want to reduce the pressure of everything in here. So I'm going to open valve one. Valve three is open. Open, closed, open, open. This is just always closed. And then we just have the mechanical pump Okay. Here. So basically when you start roughing in, V4 is the only one that is closed yep. because it's, it's uh, to the outside world. Yeah. Everything else has to be open to let the rough-in pump over here do its, do its, yeah, do its yeah. job. So the roughing pump also has oil in it, so we also want to make sure the roughing pump doesn't shoot oil into our vacuum system. But that normally isn't a problem until the very end. Okay. Okay, so we can just turn on the mechanical pump now, which is over here. Turn it on here. already down low enough. I just use this as a judgment and just say never go above 300. Okay. Three, oh, above 300 is bad. And when bad things are happening, like when oil is actually shooting up into this thing, it won't just go to 300, it'll go to like 1000. It'll do crazy stuff. So you'll okay. really be able to tell that something's going wrong. And again, if something goes wrong, you'll, it will probably still work. You probably won't even need to clean it. You'll probably only need to clean it if you like mess it up like three or four times. Okay, so we're down even to like 30 um, microns. When you turn on the diffusion pump, um, some of the oil initially sublimates out of the, um, the diffusion pump. So we'll raise the pressure here a tiny bit. And here. So you just kind of want to make sure it's really low so we're not like getting oil anywhere else inside of the system. Okay, so the first thing we do when we turn on the diffusion pump is we close off valve 3. And you can see this is going up a little bit just because now it's only pulling through the one pipe. So we're closing off valve, valve three. 3, okay. What? The reason why we're closing valve 3 is so the diffusion pump doesn't have to do extra work to pull gas out of here. It's only pulling gas out of here. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So we don't want to have to. All oh, right, we don't want to have to pull gas out of the rough end because yeah. It, yeah. It, it'll never go uh -huh. down to pressure. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> now valve one is open, valve two is open. Yeah. So we should be able to turn on the diffusion pump. So the diffusion pump has a couple working parts. You can just consider the coal the cold trap as like part of the way that the fusion pump works. Since there, in principle, should be no water in the system, we can go ahead and turn on the pull trap. Pull trap, you just can't turn on if there's water vapor in the system. The fusion pump can't be turned on without turning on the coolant to the sides first, because otherwise the oil will, won't condense when it hits the sides of the wall. Okay. So, really doesn't matter when you turn on the water. I can just go ahead and turn it on right now, and we'll come out of this. And you can check if the diffusion pump is on by checking the temperature of the water. So the water is this one. Yeah. And a line, just a line to the pipe means it's on. Yes, yeah, so this is um, off. This is off. And you can just see it because when it's on, it's running. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Really doesn't matter. I could have turned on the water whenever I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It just saves water to not leave it on. Okay. Cold trap. What is kind of weird. Um, we really need a metal funnel because the plastic funnels keep breaking. Oh. Because the liquid nitrogen just cracks them. Yeah. And one and a half of these is not really good. Even one will probably be good. So you can see like when I put the liquid nitrogen it already made it go a lot lower. 
either because it condensed water that was already in here or it created a diffusion gradient that caused gas to fall out of this container. And look, T2 is all the way down to 100 now almost. Yeah. So there honestly probably just is a leak in T2. Like when I first started working on this thing, mm -hmm. I thought like that was normal and I didn't realize something was wrong with it, but it just has a leak that apparently it doesn't really matter. I never did this before, but like one cool thing about the fusion pumps is like the limit to this, there's no limit to the size um, that they can be. So like you can make a diffusion pump with an opening that's like the size of a room and then you can just easily like bring a whole room down to vacuum. That's oh. kind of cool. <laughs> that doesn't, that's not true for other kinds of pumps. So you said one and a half of these, does that mean one and a half of these containers or? or yep. Because that's what it looks like you're doing. So when you do one and a half, like more than one and a half, well, you don't actually need one and a half. More than one and a half will just overflow this. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, if it overflows, nothing really happens. It just comes out, and it's not that big of a deal. I'm just wasted like a nice thing. Where does it come out? Um, so it comes out, there's a little, it's where the pipe is attached, I think. Oh, it, it overflows up high. Yeah, it just okay. out of the pipe. But honestly, we probably don't even need that much more. So this is kind of what I was talking about. It won't really go below 10. If I just smack it, it'll go lower because the spring <laughs> is kind of messed up. So you just kind of let it go down to 10 and just like say, okay, we've waited long enough, and then you can turn on the pedal gauge. But we haven't even turned on the diffusion pump yet, so it's actually kind of crazy that we're already down to 10. Yeah, that's just the rough end, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see. Valve two, open. Valve one, open. Valve four, closed. Okay. Valve three, closed. So I think we're good to go. We can turn on the diffusion pump. Okay. Let's turn this guy on. <clears throat> All it's gonna do, it's just gonna heat up. It doesn't have any pumping action. Uh, you can check if it's hot just by like putting your hand there. You'll be able to feel it when it gets hot, but don't, it gets super hot, so you probably don't want to touch it if it's super hot. Okay. But it's got the coolant uh, line there. Why, why don't we have coolant running through it? Instead of water? Uh, is the water running through that oh, right yeah, now? the water yeah. is running through it right now. Oh, so you say even if, it, if, if the water's running through and it still gets hot, then... It still gets really hot, yeah. Because it, it just needs to... The whole... This whole thing is at the boiling point of the oil, and this is... Uh, just making it like a little bit lower so the oil will uh, condense onto the sides. Mm. Yeah, I noticed is this light is broken. Yeah, the mechanical pump light. That would mm -hmm. probably be pretty easy to fix. So, just like our general checks, this is looking, this is really low. This is around a little bit less than 200, so everything still looks good. Um, Nothing's exploding. Water is getting hot. <laughs> Normally, it, it doesn't get to 10 millitor from just the roughing pump. That's like kind of crazy. So to turn this on, you just click on. This, um, let's see, has remote HV off and HV on. High, it's just high voltage on. So right now, this thing's on, but the detector is not turned on. Like the high voltage to run the little particle accelerator in there isn't turned on yet. So when I flip that on, it starts off at 10 to the minus, or something to the minus 10 because it hasn't actually measured anything yet. Mm -hmm. So you just have to wait a little bit until it actually starts measuring the pressure. So this is actually lower than it needs to be. I think 10 to the negative four is what it has to be. So for the people on video listening, it, we waited forever for it to go from <laughs> low on the left, which is an error, ten, uh, minus 10 on the right. And then we waited and waited and waited and waited until finally it went to this. Um, you want to make sure what, sorry? You want to make sure this is very... Yeah, all the way off. All the way off, because when you turn it on, it's going to uh, create a quick flow of current through our little... Um, crucible? Yeah, crucible. 
and if it has like a quick current, the temperature will change very fast. And uh, thermal can, shock. Yeah, thermal shock it can crack the crucible. The crucible in here is already a real cracked, but I think it's just the ceramic is cracked, not the wire itself. Mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. it'll still work. Ceramic coating. So I'm going to slowly turn it up to 63 watts. And that's going to be to turn the voltage to maximum. And I think this is already at max current. So that should be good. Yeah, it's already at max current. And you should start to see this glow when it starts to get hot. Three, I think we are. I'm like around 60 right now. I think. Yeah. And I think we can just tell by the brightness. It's getting hot. I can actually see, I think, it's getting on there a little bit, I think. It's kind of hard to tell. In general, you have to like look at where there's no deposition and then look at where the deposition is occurring to try to tell like the difference in light. Um, so ramp up and ramp down slowly for anything that could, could yeah. get thermal shock. Make sure students don't use this one because you can't go to 272 watts. This isn't strong enough. 272 watts? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first thing you do is turn off the cold cathode gauge because uh -huh. it will break if that we like, increase the pressure past yeah. 10 to the minus 2 torque. Which is actually like a... So this is millitorque. Okay, so that's, that has to be below 10. Okay. Good to know. Cold cathode is off. Okay. So we want to get this to atmospheric pressure. So the first thing I'm going to do, valve 3 is already closed, and I want to get this to atmospheric pressure. So all I should have to do is close this valve, right? This is one in I isolate V1 so that it's... Yep. And turn on valve 4? Um, yes, turn on. But before we do that, just in case something breaks in here, <clears throat> we're going to turn off the diffusion pump too. Okay. And I'm going to leave the water on. To cool um, it down. To, cool, to let it cool down because if we leave it hot and we open up some valves, we could still have oil sublimating oh, into the, okay. the top. Um, and I can't let air into the cold trap right now because the cold trap would condense water in, the, in oh, any okay. ambient air if I let air in. Okay. So I'm going to slowly let air in through here. And uh, you just want to make sure you don't like break this thing. I don't. I think it's pretty difficult to break, so I think you can let in pretty fast. But like it's open right now, so it's letting in ash really slowly. Yeah, that went up the atmosphere now. Mm -hmm. So this is our atmosphere. So it's probably like at a pretty high pressure. So I'm gonna open up slowly. This is like when you can actually do damage to it because. Uh, so TC1 is at atmosphere, that's that guy right there. Yeah, you can hear it's letting it air right now. Yeah. V2 is still on because we want to make, make sure that the, the, the diffusion pump is protected and yep. so V2 stays on to keep the rough end roughing out, yep. roughing out whatever the diffusion pump is pulling through. Mm -hmm. V3 is off is so off, that it's so. isolated. Oh no, uh, V3 is... V3 is off. V3 is off so it's is isolated off, from right. the mechanical pump. Because V3 is off so that we don't have to keep... We want to... We want to uh, atmospherize that... The whole thing, so why... Why would we keep that open if we want to... Yep. If V4 was open and V3 was open, then we would let atmospheric air all the way through here, all the way back around, and we would screw everything up right here. So now this isn't letting any air in anymore. Mm -hmm. You actually shouldn't touch your finger onto this. I don't know why I did that. So it made like suck your finger in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, let's see. It smells like burning. So I think. Oh, whoa, we did it! Nice. Yay. That actually kind of looks half solar. Yeah. I did just didn't put very much aluminum there. Mm -hmm. I think so. But yeah, see how like on the side there's like little spots that aren't. Um, if there's no deposited aluminum on it. That's what I do. I normally just like touch the corner here. Yeah. And then nothing will get deposited yeah. here. So you can tell what's going on. Mm. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay. We, we did it.
So this guy is basically a tiny particle accelerator, mm -hmm. and it measures how many times, it, there's so few gas molecules, it's just gonna measure how many times it ionizes, counting gas molecules to calculate mm -hmm. the pressure. And, uh, so, so, so it's counting, it's actually counting the molecule density. Yep, yep, I believe so. Okay. And so, um, the danger to turning that on when it's hot is it will, uh, it will just ionize so many particles that it will oxidize and break. So you can actually safely turn it on up to like 30 torr or something crazy like that, but it will just slowly break over time. We're going to be using this guy like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yeah. of times, so we want to keep it working as long as we can. Yes. So only turn it on below 10 to the minus 3 torr. Okay. Um, so another thing that actually happens by accident is the water valve is under here. Um, I think it's this. If a student hits this, it will shoot water everywhere, so just be careful um, that students aren't turning that. Okay. I think it's that. 